in order to approach this one, we have to remember that cubing something means multiplying it by itself three times. So your first step, if we are going to cube this, is that you're going to actually write it out three times. So you're going to write out x minus 5 times x minus 5 times x minus 5. Once you've done that, now you can go ahead and multiply it out using those skills that we talked about yesterday. So please do so. So in order to multiply all three of these out, remember we picked two of them and multiplied just those two. So like I'm going to multiply this x minus 5 times this x minus 5. When I do that, I'm going to do x squared, that's x times x. Then I'm going to do the x times the minus 5, so that's minus 5x. Now I need to still do it with the minus 5 to both. So minus 5 times x there is another minus 5x. Yes, we need them both. And then we do the minus 5 times the minus 5 which is a positive 25. Now, remember, that's just for multiplying the first two together. So that x minus 5, that third piece, is still hanging out there. At this point, you do have an option. You can either go ahead and now just multiply all four of these by both of these, or what I prefer to do is actually combine the like terms first. I like to simplify as I go. So I'm actually going to turn this first into x squared minus 10x, plus 25, and then go ahead and multiply it through. So next step, multiply everything in the first parentheses by everything in the second parentheses from here. From here, I now need to multiply everything in the first parentheses by everything in the second parentheses. So I'm going to start by doing that, x squared times x, which is going to give me x cubed, and then x squared times the minus 5 gives me minus... 5x squared. Pay attention to the exponents. Now, I'm going to go do the negative 10 times x, negative 10x rather, times x, and the negative 10x times the negative 5. So negative 10x times x is minus 10x squared. And then the negative 10x times the negative 5 is a positive 50x. And finally, we now go to the 25, where I'm going to do 25 times x and 25 times the negative 5. So that gives me plus 25x minus 125. Now, of course, we're not done. We do need to combine the like terms here. So the x squareds, I'm sorry, the x cubes that we start with, there's only just that one. Uh, what do I see of the other ones? x squared terms. I see a minus 5x squared here. I see a minus 10x squared here. That's the only squareds I see. So that's going to be a minus 15x squared. And then I look for the x's. I got a positive 50x here. I got a positive 25x here. That gave me a positive 75x minus 125 because that 125 doesn't combine with anything else. We're picking up on our fraction ideas a little bit today. And so this is where we're going to be spending the rest of our time is simplifying the fractions. Now, each of these are the types of problems we've done in the past. These should be somewhat familiar, and you should be feeling okay on how to approach them. And so because of that, I'd like you to go ahead and write down and simplify each of these expressions, and then we'll look to make sure that you got everything down before we go and start extending our stuff with these here in a moment. All right, y'all, so in order to actually do these now, for that first one, you got x to the ninth over x squared. Now, hopefully you remember the rule, but if you don't, you can always revert to thinking about, if I actually write out 9x's all multiplied out in a row, and that represents the top, and then I multiply out 2x's for the bottom, because that's what x to the ninth and x squared means, if I cancel them, notice I'm taking 2x's out of the top by canceling them out. That's why the rule is that you subtract the exponents. And so, 9 minus 2 gives me x to the 7th. Now, if you just remember the rule, use the rule. But if you don't, you can always draw it out as a way to remind yourself. And that can also help you when we take a look at the second one. Because if you again try to use the rule on the second one, subtract the exponents, it can be a little bit awkward, right? Because there you'd be doing 5 minus 7. That's a negative 2. We don't want to give an answer of x to the negative 2. That's like weird, right? 
So, the negative exponent, we can actually see what that means by again kind of drawing it out and seeing if I have five x's all multiplied out on the top, and then I have seven x's all multiplied out on the bottom, and then I start canceling out. Notice I can cancel five of the x's out of both top and bottom, and that ends up leaving me, that last one kind of misses target, that ends up leaving me with two x's on the bottom. Now, if there's two x's left on the bottom, what's left on top? It, anything divided by itself is one, so yeah, it'd be a one on the top. It's tempting to think zero because there was nothing on top, but it's more because we're dividing it by itself, so it's a one. So notice that x to the negative two, when you get that negative exponent, it actually tells you, oh, that, th that thing's on the bottom. Use the same idea to finish simplifying these two. I'll give you a little bit more time to finish those out. So for this one now, I need to go ahead and simplify that one. And you notice there's two parts to it in this case. We got a number part and we have a variable part. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat each of those two parts separately. So first up, I have the fraction 35 over 40. All right, I'm going to reduce it, just like I would reduce it with a regular old numerical fraction. It's numbers, not exponents here. So what can I divide both 35 and 40 by? 5. And so that's what we're going to do. 7 over 8. So on the top, 35 divided by 5 is 7. 40 divided by 5 is 8. And so we end up with 7 over 8 there. But we're not done. Because now I need to deal with the x part. So if I have x to the 4th over x, now that's kind of like the problems that we just did up here, right? I can subtract the exponents. What's the exponent on the bottom? 1. one. And so 4 minus 1 gives me 3. So it's 7x cubed over 8. That would be your final answer. All right. Next one. The 24x to the 5th over 14x to the 6th. Start again. You're looking at the numbers all by themselves, and then we'll worry about the x's after that. So 24 over 14. What can I divide them both by? 2. I can divide them both by 2. And so that's what I'm going to do at the start here. So I'm going to turn the top into a 12 and the bottom into a 7. All right, so I got 12 over 7 so far. Now we've got to look at the x's. I have x to the 5th over x to the 6th. Well, if I subtract them, I get a negative 1. What's that tell me? Yeah, it means it's in the bottom, because I ended up with more x's in the bottom, notice. And it's like it's over x to the power of 1, but of course we don't need to write the power of 1, so we can just write it as 12 over 7x. All right, so this is now kind of like those last two we did, except it's a stepped-up version. There's a lot more going on in it. Now, you've seen problems kind of like this before, but this one's got a little bit more going on in it because we've seen ones before where we look to see what can I pull out of every single number. So I'd look at the 20, the 10, the 16, the 15, and that's actually how I'm going to start this one as well. What can I pull out of all four of those numbers? Well, 20, 10, and 15, I can pull a 5 out of that. Can I pull a 5 out of the 16, though? No. Uh, in fact, even if I just look at the bottom two, the 16 and the 15, nothing comes out of those. So we still start by looking for that, but there isn't one in this case. But there still is something we can pull out, and this is the new variant for today's work, because all of these do have x's in them. And so we need to see how many x's can I pull out of every single term. And so I look for the smallest number of x's, which is that. It's 1. So I'm going to pull out 1x out of every single term. This is reducing. And so it's like subtracting 1 from every exponent. So on the top, the 20 was still 20, because remember I couldn't change the numbers in this case. 
but x to the fourth becomes x cubed. Then we have the 10, because it stayed at 10, and then I take 1 away from that, so that becomes x squared. Then on the bottom, becomes 16x, because I'm taking 1 away from the exponent again, and then minus the 15, just the 15, because we took the x out of that. Now, there, there might be someone else also, because I heard it once already, wondering, could I actually just add them together? Could I do that there, or could I add these here? No. The reason is because, remember, that in order for us to add terms that have x's in them, we have to have like terms, which means the same variable and the same exponent. Since these have this different exponents, we can't add them. We could have multiplied them, but we didn't need to. But you cannot add them together. So this, then, that is your final answer. That's what we're looking for on this one. That's as good as we can make it. Consider it fully simplified now. All right, so let's take a look at this one now. Um, I start by looking at the numbers again. 24, 16, 9, 12. Can I divide all those by the same thing? There's a lot of good candidates for things that look like they might go into everything, but there's always one that gets in the way, it seems. It's like the 9 or the 16 is always getting in the way. In fact, between 9 and 16, there's nothing that goes into both of those. So, uh, 3 does not go into 16. So I can't pull out the 3. So, if I can't divide out by 3, that means all I can do then is look for x's. I do have x's in every term. How many x's can I pull out of every term? Five. Five. And so, that's what we're going to do. Go ahead and do that, please. And then we'll check our answers up here. All right, so our numbers all stay the same, but I can go ahead and pull out x to the fifth. So if I take five x's out of these eight x's, I'm left with three of them. So that becomes an x cubed. Same thing for all of them. So x to the seventh becomes x squared. The x to the fifth here it totally goes away because we're canceling out all five of those x's. And then this x to the sixth, that just becomes an x. This then would be considered your fully simplified form. So now with this one, we approach it the same way. Our thought process is the same. Step one, look at the numbers. Can I factor anything out of all four of the numbers? Uh, yes. yes, we can. So start by doing so. And so a great little habit to do with that is actually just sketch them in then. So like, I can pull out 5 out of each one, so 10 becomes a 2. I'm going to leave room to write in some x's after that. Minus uh, 30 divided by 5, that's going to give me a 6. The 50 divided by 5 becomes a 10. Leave some room again for your x's when we put them in later. Then the 15 divided by 5, that gives me a 3. So I know those parts for my numbers. Now I look at the x's. So... Looking at every single term, remember it has to be every term. How many x's can I pull out? Five. Five. Yep. x to the fifth, because that's the smallest of our exponents that we have there. So, I pull five x's out of each, so that gives me x to the fifth, x squared, x cubed, and just a plain old three. No x's in that last term. This is now fully simplified. All right, so for this one, again, we start the same way. We're looking at the numbers first. 12, 60, 36, 24. Yes, they are all divisible by the same number. In fact, there's a lot of numbers that go into all of them. What's the biggest one? 12. 12. 12 is the biggest. So I'm actually going to pull a 12 out of everything. Now, when I do that, what is this 12 going to become? It becomes 1 or 1x to the 4th, depending on which phase you're thinking about here, because 12 divided by 12 is 1. So when I put in the numbers for placeholders, I'm going to at least put a 1 there, so I remember that there's still something there. Plus, and then 60 divided by 12 is 5. And then on the bottom, I'm doing the same kind of stuff. So 24 divided by 12 is 2. Then the plus 36 divided by 12 is 3. So now I've done all the numbers. Now I need to look at the x's. 
All right, so as I look at my x's, how many can I pull out of every term? Four. Four, absolutely. And so when I do that, out of this first term, everything's canceled out. I just pulled everything out of there. Does that mean that I still need the one here? Yes. And that's the critical piece of this one. That's the piece that might have tripped you up as you're working through this one is you might have thought, oh, well, that just totally goes away, and you might have just had 5x squared on the top. But no, you actually have to have 1 plus 5x squared. Because it's a 1 plus, not a 1 times, it changes it. All right, and then on the bottom, let's go ahead and finish this out. We're taking out 4x's, remember, so this is going to become x cubed and x squared on the bottom. This is your correct final answer here. So now this problem is a different variation on this process. Uh, but we actually can approach it the same kind of way. The first thing, though, I, I really need to do is show you what not to do here. Because some of you, you're going to look at this, and we've just been doing a lot of expanding, and you're going to think, okay, first thing I do is multiply it all out. If you did that, do not write this yet, you would end up with x squared plus 3x minus 28 all over x squared plus 14x plus 49. Looking at this, can you simplify that? I don't see anything. Because, for instance, you cannot just cross out the x squareds because you'll notice there's not an x squared in every term. And there's not an x in these terms, so I can't pull any x's out. There's no common numbers that go into these. So no, there isn't a way to do that. So you do not want to expand them out. In fact, our strategy for dealing with big, ugly problems that look like these is actually to leave them in their factored form. What we want to do is we want to see what is being multiplied into both the top and the bottom that I can cancel out. And you'll notice that they both include x plus 7. That appears in both top and bottom. We can use that. Now, just for uber clarity, though, the top is x minus 4 times x plus 7. The bottom being x plus 7 squared means that it is x plus 7 times itself. So there's actually x plus 7 times x plus 7 on the bottom. So if I cancel out, I can cancel out x plus 7 and one of the x plus 7s on the bottom because you'll notice that they are being multiplied in both the top and the bottom, which leaves me just with a final answer, and yes, this is what you want to write down, x minus 4 over x plus 7. That is your final answer. We are allowed to do that because it's multiplication happening on the top. Yes, it's multiplying by something that's more than just an x or just a number, but we can still do it because we're multiplying by that whole chunk. All right, now for this one, how do we simplify it? Again, taking a look at it, there's nothing that I can take out of every single term on both the top and the bottom. So there's none of the kind of reducing we were doing at the start, but it actually can still be simplified by using some of the skills we have from earlier this year. Remember in the last problem, we had a factored form. We had the two sets of parentheses. You can actually turn both of these into that, right? The top factors. What does the top factor into? Well, remember, we're looking to see what two numbers add to the middle number and multiply to the last number. Looks like 5 and 5, right? And so it's just going to be x plus 5 times x plus 5. Now, I could actually make my life a little bit simpler by writing it instead as x plus 5 squared. Either way would work in this case, because this is just our work. It's not our final answer yet. On the bottom, we do the same kind of thing. We look to see what two numbers add to 7 and multiply at 10. 5 and 2, absolutely. And so then I write my factored form for that, x plus 5, x plus 2. Yes, you should be writing this work down on your paper to keep track of what our process is. And so now that we factored the top and factored the bottom, we look to see 
do both the top and the bottom include the same factor? And yes, you'll notice that there is an x plus 5 appearing in both top and bottom, so we can cancel out a pair of x plus 5s. And by doing so, we then have a final answer of x plus 5 left over on the top and x plus 2 left over on the bottom. So after factoring the top and factoring the bottom here, you can see our results. Now, in this case, with the way I wrote it, notice my x minus 3 is first here, my x minus 3 is second here. Yes, I have one in both top and bottom, but they're in a different order. Does that matter? No, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that there's an x minus 3 in the top and in the bottom that I can cancel out. And again, because it's the whole parentheses being multiplied by it that allows us to do that. And so what's left on top is x minus 8, what's left on bottom is x plus 6, and that's your final answer.